Hi, Bob Klotz for Occupy Main TV, reporting on our environment, out here in our environment, occupying it and being occupied by it. It's actually quite beautiful, and I can actually say I'm winter camping, though. It was questionable of recent with 45 degree temperatures and no snow. Um, but even with that, the extremes of climate change are evident, and unfortunately I think will become more evident. Uh, not enough snowpack to uh, safely uh, protect the wildlife out here and, and our life in terms of the risk of droughts uh, due to the lack of snowpack. I have come out here, as I oftentimes do, to reflect and find myself confronting many of the big questions, including about the meaning of life. And I think many years ago it came to me that the answer to that question is that it's about learning. And that is my experience on a number of levels, including with the Occupy experience, being out here in the woods, relationships, work, all of it. It's, it's about learning for me. And I look forward to continuing to be in conversation with you about learning and speaking with you about issues of uh, our environment and the importance. I fear that the risks are extremely high, uh, and I hope that we as a species can take on the actions necessary. Uh, and in this episode, I consider a number of those things that I would invite you to participate in and take action around and certainly be in touch with me to continue that conversation, which is fundamentally part of the Occupy movement, being in the conversation. So as I continue my activities this weekend and try to be open to the learning that exists and to be grateful uh, for this powerful natural environment around me, uh, truly a sacred thing, something that we need to respect and steward and which I fear we're not doing adequately. Um, I appreciate you taking the time uh, to take a look at this and to enjoy all there is around us. Thank you. I want to talk with you regarding recent activities in association with 350.org and political activism in Maine with the Blow the Whistle events. On Valentine's Day, February the 14th, the residents of Portland, Maine awoke to a number of displays, including printed hearts posted up around the city. Residents in Portland, as well as in Augusta, encountered groups of activists dressed as referees intent on blowing the whistle on the corrupt sale of our country's resources to dirty energy interests. Groups met with representatives at Senator Susan Collins and Snow's offices and Representative Pingree to express concern for the corruption rampant in Congress relative to dirty energy. In Augusta, protesters developed an impressive skit to specifically challenge Senator 245,000 in dirty energy money Collins. The longer clip is available as a special edition That's clip at our website. Good. Always open for business. In Biddeford, a group largely consisting of University of New England students protested on Main Street. Here's my report. As Maine goes, so goes the nation. On a cool but ultimately seasonably warm morning, activists stood on Main Street in Biddeford, Maine, wearing striped referee shirts, blowing whistles, holding signs, and engaging with their fellow citizens. These patriots had come to blow the whistle on the fiscal and political corruption rampant in the United States. Led by Katie Karen, an environmental sciences major at the University of New England, the Biddeford contingent of the 350.org action had come to meet with representatives of Senator 245,000 from Dirty Energy Susan Collins and Senator 130,000 from Dirty Energy Olympia Snow. To refer to Biddeford as a sleepy little town that morning would be a bit of an understatement. With many of the storefronts of this mill town shuttered, its residents slowly began their bleary-eyed awakenings. Though there were certainly those resistant to the well-intentioned persistence of the blowing of whistles, the interactions with these activists were consistently polite and curious. All acknowledged their awareness of the corruption, Many indicated that they had come to expect it as some form of perverse American way. What can I do, more than one person was heard to ask. Raise awareness was the response and the action of the day. References to hope did exist. Windmills, tidal energy, better gas mileage, solar panels. Sure, I'll sign on with you guys. But ultimately, appreciation expressed and awareness hopefully raised. There is certainly hope that as Maine goes, so goes the nation. 
There are numerous environmental priorities to attend to here in Maine. Particularly notable are the pipeline issues, especially the literally in our backyard end bridge trail breaker pipeline. A recent seminar at USM will be considered in a future installment of our program, but please contact these various agencies for further information and to participate in attending to these crucial issues. There are also numerous other environmental issues before the legislature, including regarding BPA as well as the environmentally destructive East-West Highway. Contact with your legislator is critical. Contact with the governor's office is essential on a number of levels, but current activities related to dismantling LERC demand immediate attention. Continued challenges to numerous natural resources in Maine requires diligence. Please consider these links for additional action. And then there are significant concerns regarding the Searsport LPG tank project. Turning home from an almost seven mile round trip from base camp, home being base camp for this trip, and again, thoughts, reflections, learning to share. Uh, the saying, it's a journey, not a destination, certainly comes to mind and certainly has been quite a journey today. Um, for me, tomorrow, uh, planning on heading out, uh, I realize I'm going to be quite distracted by attraction to my destination uh, but for today it's it's been quite a journey and uh, greatly greatly appreciated as is the journey of life and the the journey of this country and also uh, the occupy movement uh, for me you know there can be enormous frustrations and but i realize that much like here uh, there are many paths that's one of the beauties of the freedom of our country is uh, there are many paths we come together with people for some of them and we don't understand why certain people go down certain ones um, but I realized that the language wasn't perfect union it was a more perfect union uh, and I certainly continue to hope that the different considerations that come from Occupy will allow all of us to access safety and security and wealth, wealth beyond the monetary, traditional monetary definition. Um, I think there's tremendous possibility and I continue to hope for and work towards that possibility. Thanks.